Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Fully Supported and yes I'm back and it's been a while since we've done one of these Fully Supported episodes and I figured this title might get you guys attention and yeah your printer sucks. No I don't mean it actually sucks like the manufacturer or anything like that there's nothing wrong with it but it's more than likely sucking harder than it should be on prints because most people probably just fail to check orientation because of suction issues or most people don't even think about it. Uh, let's take a look at this first model that I have here, which I already hollowed, and I actually left some mistakes on it intentionally to show you guys what can happen when you don't carefully block off or look for, you know, what you need to do when you're doing your hollowing. Now, with a big old object like this giant, uh, kind of like, I don't know, Terminator skull, kind of like a steampunk skull. I mean, if you had some cogs in there, he's, he's cool. He's like a, it's like a me metallic mecha skull. Anyway, there's a lot of suction going on in this guy anyway, regardless of what I did with any of the holes or anything like that. And I'll show you what I mean. So let's go ahead and run the suction cup detection. And that will show you all the suction cups that you have. Now there's 13 total right now that we're looking at. And you can see the nose inside the bottom of the cheekbones, inside the cup of the eye there, the bottom of the eye socket. Uh, there's these little sections there right at the base of the bottom of the back where it would connect to the, to the area like the neck. Um, that is um, suctioning because those areas create themselves along the side of the base of the skull and then form into it. And so because I didn't block those zones, now you have a little bit of a uh, uh, air pocket there that's going to catch suction for, I, I don't know, a, at least a decent chunk of layers that is, you know, I mean, it's not going to necessarily cause the print to fail. It's not necessarily going to cause a resin trap either because the resin will pool into uh, the area that has the holes eventually and it'll be fine. What it might do is it might cause some of your supports to fail or it might cause parts of that print to warp or shear or tear or do a lot of other things that you don't necessarily want. So in order to save yourself and to save your printer from a lot of extra stress because you're increasing the peel forces when you do stuff like this, always use blocking on parts that are isolated like that where they come up first. If you can't block them or it's just too inconvenient to do all the blocking, try to orient it in a different manner. Now we can try and orient this skull in a couple different ways to see if that will change the way the suctioning will work. But more than likely, those little areas there and some of the other ones are probably going to stay. So let's go ahead and we'll tilt it back a ways to give it a deeper angle upward so that way the chin is kind of facing the sky and the back of the head is kind of more of a, a you know, almost like a 45 degree angle there. So now this is going to create suction along that back portion where the holes are right at the back. And it's also still going to create suction in some of the areas that we were already talking about. Uh, you'll probably lose some suction in the eye socket or you'll gain some and you'll get a deeper deeper set of suction in the nose area that's that's what that was already there so we're not really solving problems by tilting the head backwards now you could alternatively try to tilt it forwards or sideways or a bunch of different other orientations you might find one that has the least amount of suction cups for what you're doing but for an object like this that has so many nooks and crannies and the size of it that it is technically because it get because the bigger they get sometimes that creates suction cups on its own um you really you have to cut your losses at some point and go all right it's got a few suction cups it'll survive what i usually do is compensate by putting a little bit heavier supporting around the areas where the suction cup is going to appear this will give my uh model a little bit extra pullback and even though this is more stress on the printer and this is more stress on the FEP and stuff like that, and you're going to go through more FEPs and VATs than you want to, you can still do this. It's not impossible. And there are just some designs that just have suction cups. And I'll show you an example of one in just a second when I load up one of the other models. Uh, because some things just inherently, just due to orientation, will have suction cups regardless of hollowing or holes or any of that stuff and that's when it becomes ultra frustrating and I've had a lot of people ask me why did my print fail why did it look like it wore why did it do this and I'll take a look at the object and the first thing I'm gonna see is the suctioning area where it's pulling back and if it's under supported in that area or just lightly supported in that area 
then you're definitely not going to have a good time or a good print. Um, okay, so this fox mask, this was one of the ones I was saying is an example of just a design that creates suction cups. Now, I want to print this up and down like this because I don't want to put any damage on the front or the teeth or any of that stuff. So I want all the supports to be underneath uh, the mask itself. So when we do that, we get seven suction cups that get created in between the teeth. And that's because the detail there is so deep that at this scale... It's creating suction pockets in between the teeth. So there's an easy way to fix that. And unfortunately for me, my printer, I need to actually scale this down just a weensy weensy bit because in order to tilt it, um, he, he's too big this way. So I need to just, just scale him down ever so much. And he already doesn't fit full size anyway on this particular print bed that I'm using. But um, I'll, I'll get the point across because an orientation change will fix this problem. So... All you're going to want to do is you're going to just want to tilt the mask either forward or backward a little bit. It doesn't even have to be more than 10 or 15 degrees. And that will be enough of an orientation shift to make those teeth no longer be a problem. Now, they're not going to disappear completely. You're probably going to have one or two suction cups left. But for the most part, this will get rid of most of your suctioning. As you can see there with the new scan, we show we only have one. So that's a much better improvement. Even though we had to downsize the mask in order to do that, I would rather make them at a slightly smaller size, seeing as these are decorative, not for wearing. And that way you definitely will have a good print. Or at least a better print, anyway. Uh, we'll take a look at this other one here. Now this little skull. This is supposed to be a cane topper, but the default size is very small. I imagine I'd have to make this guy a little bigger if I wanted him to be the top of a cane. Now, he's got a couple of issues. The model actually comes with a whole, like, the hat is actually hollowed out, so that's a big problem. Uh, and there's a lot of issues as far as the way it was designed. The rim of the hat comes up like a nice little suction pocket on the back. And so, since essentially from this uh, orientation flat on its bottom, if I, was to, if I were to try to print this off the plate and simply support the islands... It would have a lot of suctioning once it reached certain areas uh, of the hat and the eye socket. Since they're so deep and uh, they're, they're sunken in like that and the, the top of that hat has that kind of scoop uh, on the back as it goes around, that would cause suctioning issues. So, yeah, for something like this, you, you either need to work on orientation or you just need to deal with the, some of those areas are going to have heavier suctioning. Because um, even hollowing on an object like this can cause problems. Like, it, not necessarily, like, the meshes aren't necessarily 100% good. Like, there's some joining issues going on. And when you, when you, when you start to hollow objects out, you, you start to get a feel for um, how well they were actually made. Because you can kind of see some of the internal <laughs> um, mesh and geometry that's going on when it starts to hollow out and cut everything out. Uh, and one of the things I've noticed is that sometimes these guys will get lazy and there will be things that are just kind of not really copacetically put together the way they should be. Um, and, you know, then you wind up with more issues. Like I said, the hat is hollow, so if you were to flip him upside down to try to solve some of the other issues, you would have a giant issue with his hat because that entire hat is hollow and he would just suctions off until he reached the open part of the hat and it joined into the skull which honestly wouldn't drain anywhere so you'd have a massive resin trap or he'd just have resin slowly dribbling down his face forever as it slowly drained out of his head um either way i i, I don't like these types of designs where they're segmented like that where you don't actually have a complete three-dimensional design um, those things are very annoying to me and they cause nothing but problems um, like I said, even if you were to hollow him out and look at him or change orientation, you still have a number of issues as far as hollowing on one side, on the other. You have cutaways on one object. You have these bones that stick out to the sides. There's just, I mean, you'd have to technically put a hole in each one of these bones or you'd have to block them off. Then you'd have to go through and make sure that there were holes connecting through from the top to the bottom of the skull. Numerous issues as far as hollowing objects like this. Very, very amateurly made, not really well done, very, very poor meshing. Um, and I mean, you can tell just by the poly counts and how not smooth it is on certain surfaces that this is definitely not a master grade 3D model. But this is some of the things that people will download and print, so that's uh, obviously why I'm talking about this. This is an object that you 
might come across or an object like this that has these types of deficiencies that you have to deal with. So these are things that I want to bring up because they are things that you might have to deal with at some point. Now we'll take a look at one more model and then we're going to cut this episode out. Um, this is uh, the constable, uh, another cool looking guy there with little uh, kind of uniform on. He's got a nice little scar there. Looks like you can't see out of one of his eyes. We're going to go ahead and hollow one of these. I'm going to show you what happens when you hollow a model and then you absolutely forget to um, do something about the orientation because unlike FDM you cannot hollow an object and then simply print it off the build plate. It will not work. Um, you will just absolutely destroy your printer. Um, I can't imagine it would actually print right because you're gonna have so much suction. Um, I, don't, I don't know, I, I would never even want to try it to see what happens, but it, it, that would be a fun experiment with a printer that it was about to die. Maybe I would try that on that. Because um, more than likely it would probably damage uh, the FEP vat and probably you would get a resin leak uh, at the very least. So I don't, like. it's not a good idea. Just don't, just don't do it. Now as you can see, once we hollow the object, we have a nice big fat hole in the bottom. And if we were to do a suction cup test on him like this, you would see that he would just be one giant suction cup. Um, obviously you need to reorient uh, a model when you do something like this in order to make it work. Uh, although it would be nice to be able to still print it off the plate like that, in order to do that you would need to create vent holes in the back uh, of it as well as the bottom. So that way the air and the, the resin would have somewhere to go. Otherwise this is not, a, you, you could not do it this way. Uh, and again, I'm just showing this as an example. I would never actually try or attempt this, but as you can see, he has no suction whatsoever when he's solid. So this is, that's just caused by the hollowing. Now, if you take him, tilt him, and then you turn him a little bit, and then we rerun the suctioning with the hollowing done, you'll see that he has absolutely no suction cups whatsoever once um, we orient him the proper way. Oh, and by the way, Lychee, when it says... For some reason, it'll say that one object needs an update um, when it doesn't find any suction cups. I don't know if that's a bug or something from recent. I didn't notice that previously, but for whatever reason, when it doesn't find any suction cups, it'll say that it needs uh, that the object needs an update. Because even once you run the uh, update on both, if there's no suction cups found, it's still going to tell you that, and it's still going to tell you that an object needs an update. So that's I don't know that that's that that might be a um, a UI bug. Uh, that needs to be worked out. There was also one other bug uh, that I wanted to mention that I did actually find a workaround for and that was using the support painter. Um, I had noticed that when switching into the support painter, regardless of the type of support that I had selected, the system would then swap to mediums all the time. So what I did as a workaround is I've actually swapped around my sizing on my mediums, heavies, and lights to make them slightly adjusted so they start a little bit lighter and the mediums actually are my lights. So that way when I do start support painting, I don't have to think about too much because I usually do lights when I do support painting anyway. Um, but just keep an eye on that. If you do use the support painter, it is switching automatically uh, until they work out a bug fix, which I believe should be in the next release um, uh, update for Leji. So that is something that um, they are going to address. Anyway, all thanks so much for watching this episode. I really appreciate you guys as uh, you guys have no idea this, uh, you know, as we're trying to grow the channel, trying to get some more content. Let us know what you want to see in the comments. Don't forget to hit that like button. And uh, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. We would love to have you as part of the family. All right, y'all have a great one. See you all soon. Bye.